One alternative that some investors like is the restaurant business. Now, while the market may sound appealing, a closer look at the numbers may curb your appetite. An average of 65,000 new restaurants open every year over the past decade. Nearly all of them, okay, 55,000, ended up shutting their doors. So, pretty daunting statistic. Now, here in New York, the survival rate is even worse. But there are those who stand out. Carol Master went on a very tough assignment. Someone had to do it. <laughs> yes, yeah, someone had to do it. You signed up down to Italy, it was which is this amazing fat mecca it's for mecca. Italian food. You're absolutely right. But as you know, it's a tough business when it comes to restaurants. A lot of them do fail. Just check out some of the reality shows that show one failed establishment over another. But uh, where I went, you did find a little bit of a different story. It's already become a destination spot for locals and tourists alike. And now with a year and a half on on the books, the founders of Italy say they've made back their initial investment and more. Welcome to Italy, where it is about eating. Oh my God! And you do this throughout the day, right? This is part of the experience of Italy. Oh my gosh! And so much more. I think that we created here in this 50,000 square feet a piece of Italy, if you will, where people can socialize, can socialize over food with a glass of wine, right. do their shopping, a very civilized. So you will see people walking here with a little cart, a glass of wine. Now, how civilized is that? It sounds like, it sounds like <laughs> heaven to me. Every day, 25,000 locals and visitors sample a piece of heaven, heading to downtown New York to experience Italy, a temple devoted to the country's food and traditions. The mega store is home to seven restaurants, employing more than 700 workers, seating up to 600 customers, feeding three to 5,000 daily. Half of Italy's sales in New York are from the restaurant. The other half comes from the sale of fresh produce, pasta, cheeses, including 200 pounds of fresh mozzarella each and every day. Many Americans only know of the Italy in New York, but in fact, it's just the newest in a growing empire. Italian businessman and founder Oscar Farinetti opened the first Italy in 2007 in Turin, Italy. When the plans to go global were in place, it wasn't long before celebrity chefs Lydia Bastianich and Mario Batali jumped on board. Farinetti and Bastianich shared their goal of mixing pleasure and profits. Don't lose money is very, very important. But uh, I prefer, my objective is to create harmony side. Harmony with employees, that is more and more important for me. Harmony with customers, harmony with supplier, harmony with my partner. Harmony, yes, but making money is also on the menu. In this uh, store, we have invested $27 million, but uh, the turnover is fantastic because I think that uh, in this year, the turnover will be $80 million. So you've made that investment back? Yes. Today, Italy is already in 14 cities around the globe, seven in Italy, six in Japan, one in the United States, employing more than 2,000 and boasting millions of customers around the world every year. And Italy is looking to employ even more thanks to expansion plans. We are possibly looking at uh, Chicago. We are possibly looking at Washington, possibly Toronto. We had some great offers in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and that should be by 2.13, maybe 2.14. So in the Americas, we are expanding uh, at a nice pace, I would say. From 2013-14, it's possible to open two, three Italy per year. We want in 10 years to have uh, 20 Italy in all the Americas. This is our planning of development. Plans also include Europe. Despite the current crisis, Lydia and Oscar haven't lost their appetite for growth. You know that there exists big problem in Italy and in Europe in this moment. And normally, the sale of food in Italy is down 10%. But uh, we, in our store, we grown of 3%. Part of Italy's recipe for success is working with local farmers and featuring what's in season. They also prepare fresh food on site daily. All of this has caught the attention of others looking to cook up their own profits. So do you have a lot of other investors knocking on the door wanting to be involved in Italy? Many, many, many. Every, every day, many people, financial people, bank, call me. But for now, I don't want. 
Well, Oscar Farinetti thinks about half of everyone who walks through the doors of New York City ends up buying something. So, you know, Deirdre, it yeah, looks it's like... Yeah, it's true. At least right? from could, one, one person vote. Yeah, it's true. You've been there, right? I, yeah. And you're surrounded by all these luscious foods. And so... It's amazing. It, gets, it catches people's attention. But, you know, let's remind everybody. You mentioned it at the beginning. I mean, it's a hard business. Yeah. Uh, I think about 60% uh, of restaurants fell within the first three years, about 75% within five years. So it's not an easy business. And New York, too, even tougher. And I heard some of the other cities that they are considering expanding into, mm -hmm. Toronto, D.C., San Paulo, sounds like they're pretty sure that's going to happen, or more sure than some of the other cities. They were pretty optimistic. I mean, they weren't worried. Even when we talked about Europe and the concerns over in Italy specifically, where they've got um, some Italy's, uh, they're doing okay, and they're continuing to expand, so that hasn't slowed them down at this point. Which is odd. Actually, our retail expert, Heather Prabhakar, has been talking about this, this kind of barbell approach, because on the one hand, we talk about consumers consumers wanting to spend less, and then on the other hand, I mean, it's not cheap. Right, no, it's not. Um, and it is definitely a luxury food experience. Yeah, So absolutely. there's demand on both sides. It is interesting. And, you know, we've talked about this a lot through the downturn where a lot of the luxury higher-end retailers and, and outlets have really done better. So it seems like, you know, they're, they're doing okay. Carol, thank you. It was fun. Awesome. Yeah, it looked amazing. I should have brought back samples, sorry. <laughs> next time, next time. Carol Masser joining us there, telling us about her trip to Italy.